You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm joined with Ricky Baez on a beautiful Friday morning. Ricky, how are you today? I'm doing great, Pete. How about you? I'm doing all right, man. I'm awesome. doing all right. It is uh, it's a beautiful day in Florida. That's right. When isn't it a beautiful day in Florida for everybody else listening that's not in Florida? Uh, when it's a hurricane, I think. I think that's it. I think yeah, that's but we see those coming. So, yeah, we have Florida, man, but we also have beautiful weather. So I'll take it. We do. You have your Star Wars shirt on. You're you're ready. You're ready to go. That's right. That's right. I got a Star Wars meeting later on today. I am not kidding. That's a real thing uh, with a client. And I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Wonderful. I look forward to hearing more about that later. Uh, but today we are talking about employee complaints. Yep. An HR uh, professional's dream. Right. This is your <laughs> this is your time to shine, Ricky. This is when you're when you're needed most. Right. How to handle employee complaints. Employees never complain, though, do they? <laughs> That's rare. Isn't it? I, I don't know what kind of uh, what kind of Amazon wish list you have over there, there, Pete. Um, but, yeah, in, employees complain quite a bit, quite a bit. And, you know, HR. Uh, I think HR professionals would really kill it out there if we almost all had some kind of a psychology degree, any, any degree of psychology, even a psychiatrist, um, we would kill it out there because that's, that's almost 90% of our job, just listening to people and hearing them out and then helping them along the way. But yeah, we get a lot of each, uh, complaints from employees and leaders too. Isn't that is such an interesting statement? Uh, and I, I'm not surprised that you would make it, but I think it's unfortunate that you would need to make it, which is 90% of your job is, is complaints, right? I mean, if you had to break that down, uh, put a pie chart of, of the nature of those complaints, what, what would they be attributed to? It, you know, complaints about the company peers, you know, what, 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 you know, getting a raise, having opportunity you know, work hours. What, what, what do you think would be the top, um, hit list of, of employee complaints? The top one that I have seen in, in my 20 years is always that and people feel that they're being treated differently and because a manager's holding them accountable, right? So a, somebody comes in. Now, I'm, I'm going to paint you an awesome scenario here, Pete, because this happens quite a bit. I'm in my office. Somebody comes in and says, I need to talk to you because my manager is discriminating against me. All right, come on and have a seat. Now, the first thing I do, I listen. I don't care how many times I've heard this same story from other people in the back of my head. My conscience is fighting to say, okay, you know what? Just going to speed it up. No, I'm quiet. I listen to what they have to say. What that does is it lets them talk. You get to hear exactly what's happening, what's going on. And Pete, nine times out of 10, at the end of that conversation, I ask, so how can I help you? And you know what they say? Like, you know what? Nothing. I just I just needed to say it out loud. And then I go back to the leader. Why is this person coming to me listening to this? Right. But anyway, um, to to talk about that number one complaint, that number one complaint is people come in and they think my manager is is treating me differently because he's not writing me up. And OK, so I asked, why is he writing you up? Oh, because I didn't do what he told me to do. I'm like, OK, all right. It's and why isn't he writing Brittany up? I'm like, is Brittany doing her job? Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Right, your manager's not discriminating against you. Your manager is just holding you accountable to the job you agreed to do. There's a big difference with di discrimination and being held to the fire. So that happens quite a bit. Uh, did Did you happen to see this week's South Park episode? I have to ask. No, I haven't. I haven't. Well, I'll just leave it there. Um, okay. It is. It, it has to do with this very topic. I'll just say. Um, oh, real I'll just HR say, for and anyone who's a South Park fan, Eric Cartman gets a job, and I'll just. What? <laughs> gotta help everybody <laughs> so that uh if you, if you know south park at all um you'll you'll know that that um is probably uh it probably didn't go well i need uh, to check I'll, that out i'll leave it okay. at that yeah right. um but it, but it, it does touch on a lot of these these type of of things and you know in a in a humorous way of course and uh, i look forward to your review of uh oh i'm checking that out tonight of, of south park i give you my movie reviews you give me uh you know, you're ah, I like that. Okay. That. Yes. We'll yeah. do that. John Wick right. four by uh, tonight, by the way. So uh, I expect to hear 20 out of 10 because I, I, I keep hearing a lot of great things about well, that. 
you know, expectations are high, but they were high for Ant-Man as well. And that, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. boy, yeah. was that a, was that a bust? So we'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see. Right. Um, so on these discussion points, you know, before we get going, uh, Ricky, I, I, I have had a theory. I don't know if I've even ever shared this with you. Being in staffing for a long time, we place employees, of course, with, with our clients um, uh, who mutually agree to, um, you know, to be, to take a job, you know, mm -hmm. to offer someone a job. It, it is a mutual agreement and it's harmonious and, and everyone's happy at the beginning of the relationship, right? That, that is how, you know, the, these things go, the honeymoon period, if you will. And I find that things generally stay good. I mean, there's anomalies and outliers, of course, but for the most part, if, uh, I'm interviewing with you and you choose to offer me uh, a role uh, working, uh, reporting to you. And I accept that role. We have to get along at some level, right? You like me enough to make the offer. I like you enough to accept yep. it. We move forward. What I've noticed over the years, a trend is when management responsibilities shift, uh, when, when reporting um, a responsibility shift. So it, let's say I move to a different department or you as my manager leave the organization or you move mm -hmm. on and I'm suddenly reporting to someone else. I find that that's when most of these ma employee manager conflicts happen. Do you, have you ever had that thought? Because I've really noticed it um, so many times over the years. And, and, I, and I think that's usually the source of these um, employee manager conflicts. That happens almost every time there's a new leader when somebody gets promoted. Because, you know, especially if you have a leader that's stepping into a role that that role has had the same previous leader for the past five, 10 years, those employees are already set in their ways. That leader already has the, those rules set. And this is what I call the new sheriff complex, right? Mm -hmm. New sheriff is in town. Next thing you know, it disrupts the apple cart. What people need to understand, leaders, employees, and HR pros, is whenever there's a new leader in place, always expect the apple cart to be upset. And yep. you just have to know how to mitigate that, right? And you you have to, to expect it because contrary to popular belief, people don't like change, right? And when you start changing things, you, as a leader, you have to go in there understanding that the changes you're looking to make is going to be impactful and your job as a leader is to make sure that you make those changes as least impactful as possible, but still it's impactful. Well, I, I think it's, it's human nature. It's natural. If, 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 um, you know, if I'm, in a relationship with you, let's, let's say you're the person I go to lunch with every day and I go to lunch with you. Uh, you know, you're my work buddy. We go to lunch every day because we enjoy each other's company. We have common interests. We like mm -hmm. each other, whatever the, that bond is, is based on. I'm and, and you leave, I'm not going, and I, and I randomly have to start going to lunch with someone else because that's what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, I didn't yeah. choose to, to, uh, if you inherit a manager or a manager inherits an employee that they didn't get to interview, uh, it, mm. it, it's the same thing. What a crapshoot that is, right? Suddenly, you know, I go from going to lunch with Ricky every day. Now, Bob, who I've never met before is, is hopping in the car with me every day at noon to go to lunch, man, that's, that's gonna, that's gonna fail a high percentage of the time. Don't you think? I, it is. And, and, and look, that, that Pete, that's because we're human beings, right? And, and, and look, and I've, I said this in class and I shared this with you, HR IT and the healthcare industry are the only industries that I know that we furiously work hard to put ourselves out of business, right? IT, if you work really hard, hear me out, if you work really hard to, to make sure nobody has any IT issues, their industry doesn't exist. The medical industry, if you work really hard to make sure nobody gets sick, there isn't a medical industry. HR, if I work really hard so everybody gets along, there's no reason to have me around. But guess what, Pete? As long as you have one human being working with another, there's going to be attitude, there's going to be issues, and you're going to need me. So I have job security for years, <laughs> years. So that that's why I love my job, to be honest, because I get to intervene in people's issues, and I help them get to their aha moment. I don't want to prove them wrong. I don't want to prove them right. I want to help them get the aha moment and understand you may not have to like each other, but the respect has to be there because each and every one of you have a paycheck that's waiting on you at the end of the week, right? And that's what should be on top. But some people don't think that, Pete, I got stories for days about incredible HR stories that will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. 
Well, I don't think we're going to solve all, all, no, <laughs> all of this, right? And you just yeah. said it, as long as, as two people have to work together, conflict is inevitable. It's going to happen. Right? Uh, but let's instead focus on what you can do about it, right? Yep. And, and we have some uh, some points that we think will be helpful in that regard. So let's just start at it, uh, start, start at the top. Uh, the first thing you need to do is have a plan, right, of, of how to handle employee complaints what what's your procedure for that um what what you know you're the expert on this mm-hmm. uh, I, I may be the expert on causing employee complaints <laughs> <laughs> that's probably uh, and, and, I like know, how you put that well not unintentionally right but but it happens right if, if sure. they're going to complain about someone um you know it, it, often the complaint you know, goes to the goes to the top right i'm i'm not <laughs> perfect I, I maybe i deserve it sometimes maybe i don't who knows but we're not gonna focus on this is not a counseling therapy <laughs> was right session for me um but where uh what where do you start in is in terms of creating a, a you know, processes and procedures to handle complaints what i tell my students pete is that never ever shoot anybody away until you fully understand what's going on Right. What you have to understand as an HR professional is it's at any time anybody can come in and say, I have an issue and you have to make a determination whether you need to stop what you're doing right there and listen to that issue or just say, you know what, go back to your manager. Maybe they can help you out, blah, 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 blah. But you still need the first five minutes to fully understand that issue. So the first and foremost is understand the issue that's in front of you. Understand that issue. And although the issue may not be important to you. It is apparently very important to the employee who's in your office right now telling you what's going on, right? And what I tell my team, there are two issues, two issues that always jump to the front of the line, always. If anybody was what was touched, you know, sexually harassed, anything like that, that's, that's, that's really bad, or pay. Both of those things automatically go to the front of the line. Everything else is on a first come, first serve basis. So you have to spend the first five minutes trying to decide what kind of a situation am I looking at here, right? So let me, let me ask you about that. So the so the so the first thing you mentioned, uh, you know, that's obvious, right? That that's a very serious uh, thing in any part of life, um, you know, where there's harassment involved, mm-hmm. especially physical contact. I mean, no, no brainer there. But pay seems like it would be a very common complaint. I don't think there's an employee uh, anywhere if you asked, would you like to be paid more? Do you think you should be paid more? Yeah, it, maybe some would 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 say, no, I don't think I should be. But everyone would like to be, right? I mean, that goes without saying. So isn't pay almost a constant? I'm surprised to some degree that you would put that at the same level or or you know, above you know, potential other things. So, so, so let me be more specific, not necessarily somebody complaining that they're getting paid too little, but complaining that their paycheck is wrong. Ah, okay. That's, that's, that's an yeah, important yeah. distinction. And I yes, am now yes. with you a yeah. thousand percent because being in staffing, that is uh, the number one thing we absolutely have to get right. No ifs, mm-hmm. ands, or buts. And we, we cannot let someone go into a weekend not having a paycheck. Oh my God. And, Absolutely. You know, is, yep. you know, is we place hundreds and hundreds of people a year, as you know, mm-hmm. and it is not completely uncommon. I think it's becoming less common as we can scan these things and it's all digital, but uh, for years having um, you know, people have to write down their bank account number and the routing number for direct deposit. And that, those are numbers we're not used to writing down every day and they're long and, um, there's, there's, you know, some percentage of the time that they don't translate correctly and, um, or transcribe correctly and a direct deposit doesn't hit. And, you know, that, that has happened over the years and, you know, it's easy to say, you could say, well, it's the employee's fault. Look, they clearly wrote the thing down, the number down wrong, but I look at it those mistakes. yeah, that's part yeah, we all make mistakes. That's, Mm -hmm. that's part of it. We've written, you know, you know, manual checks, uh, you know, when those happen and, you know, FedEx checks overnight. I mean, I'm with you because as a staffing company, that is the number one thing I could never have anyone say about us is that my, they didn't deliver my paycheck. Yeah. Right. I mean, that yep. is a kiss of death and I would never let that happen. So, um, okay. Thank you for the clarification. I'm <laughs> I like, got you. Hey, complaints about pay. Come no. On. Yeah. Now, so, so, so let's talk about that. Let's say somebody comes in and say, you know what? My pay is too little, blah, 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 blah. The first thing I say is, all right, let's, let's set up some time to discuss, but have you talked to your manager first? You have to talk to your leader about this because all I know is what you've been paid before, what you're being paid right now. But your leader knows how you work. Your leader knows how you perform. 
he or she is the best person to talk about this. Now, here's what I would do, Pete. I would coach the person to go back to their leader with some ammo, right? I'll tell them, don't just say, hey, I need a, a pay raise because of inflation. It, it, it's That's not a good way. Put a business case together. Put a business case together showing how you have gone above and beyond the normal call of duty and why that is worth more than what you're currently being paid right now. So so let, let, let me ask you to clarify something else on that mm -hmm. point. Then. Uh, when, and, this, and this applies beyond pay, but you uh, uh, mentioned going to their manager first mm -hmm. um, to talk about pay. Now, in, in many, I think the larger the company, uh, the you know, managers don't have a whole lot of flexibility there. When I talk about uh, when to ask for a raise, for example, my, my first recommendation to anyone is understand how your organization handles those things. Is it, mm -hmm. is it done annually? Is it done based on merit on the fly? Maybe, maybe in that uh, case, you, you, what you're talking about right now would make sense, right? Go to your manager with, and make your case. Um, but the first thing is to understand that, right? I think you, you'd agree with that. Yep, I agree. But, but just talking about um, complaints as a whole, when should HR get involved? Like when should, you know, at what point uh, in, in how soon, or is it a, a matter of what the topic is uh, the, where HR gets involved versus uh, a first line manager, for example? HR, so I'm, I'm speaking holistically here, right? HR should only get involved if the situation is serious enough that a legal issue might come out of it. Okay. Right now is, that, now, is that a is that a general rule general for HR as a whole? Like, you know, how do I know when HR is involved? Well, when it's when 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 it's legal, right? Uh, when a legal issue may, when, may arise. When, I mean, that 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 makes sense. Yeah. Well, well, when when the situation can get complex enough that it would hurt the organization financially later on, right? Yeah. Now, now, now that that's that's the business case of it. Um, now, what I do is I. I'm really careful in how I talk to employees and how I help them because I don't want the employees to see me as that leader. They should see their leader as that leader. I'm here to help the employees, whether it's a manager or the actual employee at the bottom of the totem pole, you know, navigate these issues. But I'm like the referee at a USC match. You're like, well, no, that's a that's a bad description. Employees and leaders don't, wait, don't fight wait, like that. You're a referee. You'll, you'll, you'll only stop the fight when the person's at risk of death. <laughs> That's that's not. Uh, Could you imagine? That is you not the much, right analogy. As, as a UFC fan, I can tell you that is not. You know how much analogy. money we will make if we charge people for leaders and employees to fight each other? Man, we'll make a lot of money. Don't do that, folks. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, no. So so when so a great example, Pete. Somebody comes to me with a concern about their schedule. Somebody comes to me with a concern about attendance. Right. I tell them go to their leader. What did their leader say? If they ran to their leader, they didn't like what they say. That I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to process that information. Then have a conversation with their leader just to to let everybody know what's what's happening, what's going on. Now. If the complaint is against that leader, then I get involved and I take over that investigation and I partner with that leader's one over to say, hey, just wanted to let you know, this is the concern that came in. Now, let me pause real quick because I think it's important that I make this point right here. Do you remember the first time you had a complaint filed against you, Pete? I, I don't, you, you mean, I don't know what you mean, a complaint filed against me. I'm the, I'm because the I do, I do. I've had a couple, here's, here's why I asked that, right? A brand new, a brand new leader who comes into it, into a position, right? They're going to have to make some calls that people are not going to like, right? So when they make the calls that people are not going to like, people are going to file a complaint. They're going to uh, go to well, HR, they're going to go to your boss so when you, and stuff like that. So to clarify, when you say filed against me, I, that sounds very formal, right? I mean, I, and, and well, I, well, it kind of is to the best of my knowledge. That's not happened, but, um, <laughs> but when, uh, when I was first promoted, I was in, uh, to, for, from my first management job, I would, um, and this is, I'm, we could talk for days about this too, uh, because I think this is very common. I was on a team of about 10 and um, we all got along. Everyone was friendly. And then when there was an opportunity uh, for a promotion to manage that group, the person who would manage the group moved on. I don't even remember the exact scenario off the mm -hmm. top of my head, but uh, 
you know, I was one of the people up for the role. There were a few others in the group who who were as well. And I was the one um, who was given the opportunity to manage the team and someone who had been a very close friend of mine, I thought, um, mm. you know, was not happy about that outcome and suddenly went from an ally to, you know, an enemy, not to be dramatic, but, um, you know, complained about me constantly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I remember that uh, vividly. It was, well, it was all, it was painful. It, it was horrible. And, and I bring that up because that's important to, to talk about. I remember years ago, one of my employees, Candida, and 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 I'll tell her that I'm talking about her uh, because I've I've talked about this before in the past. When she became an HR leader, she had a complaint filed against her because she she held somebody accountable. She was freaking out because up until that point in her career, she's never had anybody file a complaint. And I just I gave her a hug and I'm like, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. And she's freaking out. But but, but Ricky, I, I don't have I, I, I have a clean record on my candida. Did you do everything right? He's like, absolutely. Did you follow the book, the, the policy? Absolutely. You have nothing to worry about. Just when the investigator comes in, answer the questions honestly. You've got nothing to worry about. The truth will come out in the end. And then it took her a few times, right? Because let me tell you, an HR person who spends their entire career without one complaint filed against them, they have not been doing their job. They have not been doing their job. And that and that's that's not just HRP leaders, leaders as well. So that's why I'm saying um, from an H from a leader perspective, right? You're going to make some calls that people are not going to like. So expect complaints filed against you. That's perfectly OK. Right? OK, so. All right. So how do you how do you establish that process, though? We, we didn't really get to Sorry, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if, as an organization, what, what do you recommend in, in that regard? Should, you know, the, we hear a lot about open door policy, you know, where that seems to be sort of the default thing. Everyone who doesn't have an open door policy. I don't, you know, like we, it, we all do, right? So I, let, let's talk about that open door policy. What does that mean? Open door policy means that you can come to me with any concern that you like, and we will look into it. What it does not mean is that after we look into it, we're going to side with whatever outcome you want to see. <laughs> That's not what that means, right? Now, this is, again, for HR leaders out there, if you say you have an open door policy, right, and people come in and say, I have a concern, you should start your conversation with this. And I say this to everybody. But before we begin, wanted to let you know that I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I'm going to listen to your concern, and we, I'm going to keep this as confidential as possible. I cannot promise you 100% confidentiality because if you tell me something that by law I have to investigate, I do have to involve other people above and beyond us. That tells the person because I've been told, Ricky, don't tell people that because then people are going to be afraid to say anything. If they're afraid to say something because of what I said, that it's not an issue. It's not an issue, right? So that means you don't see this as 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 dire enough for me to look into it. So we're so we're good. Now, if they continue going down this list, listen to those investigation claims carefully. Do not interrupt. And I don't care how many times you think you heard that story. You keep quiet and you listen, and and and, and just turn everything off. Your iPhone, everything. Do not mold to because. A lot of these times, people just want to be heard, Pete. That's right. it. They just want to be heard. So that's how I would start it. I would, I would explain the open door policy. I will listen to what they have to say. Then I make a determination whether I get involved or not. Okay. That makes sense. I like it. Right? So yeah. is there anyone, you're, any company you're aware of that has a closed door policy? What would I that look think like? I don't know the what the, the al alternate option is there. So let me give you an example of what a closed door policy looks like. Cause, cause, cause this happened to me. I was <laughs> sorry. I was working in Lake Mary. And for those of you listening, Lake Mary is a town, you know, just 10 minutes North of Orlando. Um, I was working there and there's this new back then there was this new thing called the sun rail system where I lived in Lake Nona. I take the sun rail to Lake Mary. And then I was in a schedule, right? That means that if I missed my six thirty four train back home, Right. I was I was going to be stuck there for three hours and I didn't want to. So I was on my way out one day, I, I locking the door of my office, still in the still in the building. Somebody came to me, 
crying her eyes out. This call center was open almost 24 seven. So just so you know, she just started her shift, right? So I'm about to leave. She comes in crying her eyes out. She's like, Miss Ricky, Ricky, I got to talk to you. So-and-so was touching me. He took some pictures, blah, 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 blah. And I'm on my way out. Here's what an, a closed door policy looks like. Right? He's like, oh man, I'm sorry. Hey, can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm about to miss my train. <laughs> right. What does that show her? So I'm like, you know what? In the back of my head, I'm like, I'm gonna miss my train. But I'm like, you know what? Come on, let's talk. I was there for two and a half hours. Wow. Okay. Two and a half hours. And then I had to call my wife to come pick me up. But still, uh, that's why I, I stopped taking the, uh, the, the uh, train. I'm, I, I, that was a true story, by the way. I'm saying that to say that an open door policy is exactly that. You do not turn anybody away. You don't turn anybody away. <clears throat> and depending on the information that they're telling you, you don't use it against them. Now, there's an asterisk there, right? If they tell you, look, and because I was being discriminated against, I stole some stuff from the cafeteria. You can't ignore that. <laughs> Right. right. You right. still have to address that issue. So I want people to understand an open door policy is a policy where you can come in and have a good discussion about what your current, but what your concerns are. That's what it is at any time possible. But you're not a priest and you're not an attorney. I am not. I am neither one of those. Is there a priest attorney? That would be an amazing exorcist. Movie. I'm sure there. I'm sure there's a few. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a few. All right. So. I think we've 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 set that stage well, and I know the the last thing I I want to ask you about uh, before we get into some do's and don'ts, and we'll go through those quickly. Um, you are a big fan of having regular check ins, uh, doing yep. employee surveys, so you can find out. And I I think you know as a as a as a, as a leader of a business, uh, one of the things, and I know I've shared this with you on more than one occasion, but the thing that's probably caused me the most frustration uh, over the years is that I am the last to know about some complaints. Um, you know, and to your point earlier, some are valid, some are not, right? We still have work that needs to be done. We still have a job to do. We still have to uh, be profitable as a business. So those are things that, um, you know, we, we, we can't uh, ignore, but there's a lot of times uh, I will find out that someone had a complaint that I didn't even know um it wasn't even on my radar screen, far from it. And I wish I had a way to find out about potential problems before they become real problems and or, or big problems or a reason for an employee to be frustrated and uh, decide to move on uh, about things that we didn't even know they were unhappy about. And you know, I have a few scenarios that come to mind when I think of this and it easily could have been avoided if we knew in advance. And so um, for that reason, I, I, Love that you, uh, your, your 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 support of of surveys and finding these mm -hmm. things out. Um, you know, let's ask before we know, have before we have a reason to, right? Is that a fair way to look at it? Absolutely, because but if you do an exit survey, you're going to get really good information, but it's too late for that person giving you the information. If you do a pulse survey, and there's great relationship between the employees and leadership and HR you're going to get some good information as well. And the reason I'm emphasizing on that relationship is because if you do a poll survey, the employees don't trust that we're going to do anything with the information. We're not going to get good, credible data. Mm. We're going to get everything's great, Ricky. Everything's awesome, right? Um, so so that's the information I would get. So I'm a big fan of poll surveys, but I think how you validate the credibility or the value of a poll survey is an everyday thing. And that validation is connecting with the employees, listening to what they have to say, and actually helping them in what in the best way you possibly can. You build that trust. If you have to build that trust every day, JJ Watt said it. What did he say that rents do every day? Something like that. So yeah, yeah, it's every day you have. I, I I got the last part of that. Every day you have to work on building that trust. That way, when that pulse survey comes up, they believe in it. And they give you good information and they're not going to feel like they're going to be batting down if they say something that I may not like. Right. So that's important to 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 work on every single day because he dude, HR. Let me tell you, it, it, it's we're like the police department. Every almost every interaction is negative, except somebody's leaving voluntarily. Somebody's being promoted, somebody being hired. 
anything outside of that, it's it's negative. So that's why I like to get out there, talk to the folks, shake some hands, kiss some babies. Metaphorically, I don't know why there's babies at work, but still, you know what I mean. Um, and actually, it, it's build those relationships. Excellent. All right. Thank you. That's a great that's a great answer. Um, and now let's turn to some do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. Right. Do's, do's and don'ts. So do's for responding to employee complaints. So you've, you've covered them, right? Some of them listen. What else? Uh, be, Never, be available, be accessible, be accessible. It, it, it's it's again, uh, paychecks being wrong and things that can get us in trouble is the only thing that you can continue working on as an HR hourly person without any approval for overtime. Right. I will be perfectly OK paying that overtime if you had to stay late to handle one of those issues because you got to do them timely. Yeah, Timely is, is key. So discrimination. You know, it, missing pay, no question mm -hmm. about that. Um, yeah, w what else? What are the things that else you need to do? I mean, what about um, follow up? Yeah, you know, ah. so so we have this situation. I think this is probably a common challenge. Uh, I think where you um, you have a complaint, you think you've resolved it, mm -hmm. and we all go on about our day because, of course, the objective is to solve this as quickly as possible and mm -hmm. move on. Um, you know, have everyone be able to move on the manager, the, the, the employee, who HR, you know, you have, you have your next uh, issue to tackle, but you have to follow up and make sure the fix worked. Right. And that's hard. I mean, you have to have a, a system for that. I think you do, you do. And, and the, my system for this is always this. Once I get the complaint, I'll, I'll let them know what I'm going to do with this information who I'm going to investigate, what I'm going to do, and then later on, let you know when I'm done. Here's here's where people kind of make mistakes here from, from the complaint inside. When I go back and tell them that, hey, I investigated, um, thank you very much, but everything has been handled. And the person is like, then why are they still working? Like, well, what do you mean? They, they're still working, they're not fired. Uh, so how could it be handled if they're not fired? I'm like, well, it's handled because the appropriate action was taken. Just because the the action you wanted to happen didn't happen, it doesn't mean the appropriate action did not happen. The right. appropriate action was taken, right? And all you did was brought the information to me and I took care of it. My guarantee to you is whatever happened is not going to happen again, right? Because that's what you want, right? You wanted to put somebody fired is something different then because you want the harassment to stop and you want this to stop and I stopped it. So, no, go ahead. Well, but I was just thinking, I, you know, because this is fresh in my mind, this uh, South Park episode from last night where, if, and I don't want to spoil, spoil it for you yeah, or no, anyone else. But, I am going to see it, so don't spoil it. All right, I, I won't say it. I yeah, won't yeah, okay, say it. okay. But, okay. But, but, but I think what, um, at times, what an employee, you know, so, so one of the words that we hear a lot have for the past few years, toxic work environment, right? This is a mm -hmm. toxic work environment. And you, you, you meant, I want to just clarify what you just said. I guarantee you this won't happen again. Well, and maybe, maybe you didn't say the word guarantee, but because you can't really do that. I but, stopped okay, it this from won't, happening. Yeah, this, yeah. But what if what's happening is fine, right? The employee doesn't like it, but it's just part of the job. It's part of the deal. I mean, how, how do you how do you follow up on that? Because I think you have to. The, you wouldn't say it won't happen again in that case. You you would say what? Well, this is the deal. You can accept it or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I, and I'm trying to think of a good example, um, and none immediately comes to mind, but it, it, when you have that, if you have an, a complaint and you have to say to the employee, hey, this is just part of the job, you know, you, you have to suck it up. But once a person has complained about it and, and expressed to you that they're dissatisfied with that situation, how do you handle that? Because they're going to go back to work, but you know that they're, they're not happy. Mm -hmm. how, how do you, how do you reconcile that? And I'm putting you on the spot with this question. No, no, it's okay, because I can give you a great answer. It's I have a great example that I think I've I've used before. When I worked at the county, the the uh, the person who kept calling the uh, uh, soda pop. Do you remember me, me yes. talking about that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same, same, same situation in that one, right? The person, what the person wanted to happen was so unreasonable. So I just told the person, look, that's not an issue, right? The prudent person is not going to have an issue with that. She's going to continue saying it. You have to make a decision on whether you want to continue working here under those circumstances or not. Please understand, this is the last time I'm going to hear this complaint. 
And if you keep complaining about this over and over and over again, to the point that it becomes a disruption to operations in HR and operations in the field, you are going to be held accountable. We have done that in the past. Okay. The same so, complaints but, but, over and over and over again. Now it's frivolous and now you're wasting resources. We're not going to hear you anymore. But it's, it, you know, it seems less than ideal um, to send an employee back out knowing they're dissatisfied, right? I mean, that that's what I, I wonder, you know, how, how to handle that because, you know, the person's like, well, okay, you said it and, and, but I, you know, they're just not accepting of the outcome. Yeah. That seems like it's, um, well, I, set up for an unhealthy situation moving forward. I, I hear you. But I don't know what else we could do in that situation. That's Other why, because yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm yeah, asking. Because satisfaction, the unreasonable satisfaction, I'm not I'm not going to entertain. Okay. Right? Because unreasonable satisfaction makes it reasonable for that one person, but unreasonable for everybody else in the organization. And that's just not worth it. But we have to be clear, right? Let's go back real quick to, to what you said about somebody that that where nothing was wrong, right? Look, I investigated. Here's what I got evidence on paper. Here's what I got everywhere. Else. Your claims are not substantiated. I'm not saying it didn't happen. What I'm saying is there isn't enough evidence for me to move forward, right? Now, I can talk to the person and say, look, here's the complaint, blah, 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 blah. Be careful. But I can't do anything else with it because nothing was substantiated. And the person has to accept it and be okay with it and go back to the floor. If they keep creating issues and they're labeled a troublemaker, then that's another employer relations issue that we would have to address with the employee. I think what um, you know, what I would hope for is to... You know, if if it's if it's a if it's something that can't be resolved, that you know, honesty and openness, and it's hard. I mean, this is way easier said than done, right? But um, is you know, say, hey, let, let's let's make sure we can all live with the outcome, mm -hmm. right? And and yeah. and be happy with it, um, and or not, or decide we can't be, and then figure out what what we need to do next. But that's that's you know, now you're back to needing a psychology degree to to <laughs> diagnose. Um, it is. And then maybe a PhD, right? To, to yeah, it, that out. it happens. And, and look, and I see one here, one, 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 one point here that really, I'm really passionate about taking sides. Let's talk about taking sides real quick. Right? This is, so now let's go to the don'ts, right? Because we're, uh, you know, oh, and, I'm and, sorry. And wrap yeah, up yeah. with that. No. And, and so, so I want to say, look, don't, you know, um, don't go off script if you have a policy in place, right? Mm -hmm. Don't don't break anyone's confidence in this. You know, confidentiality is huge w w when you're in HR, right? With these things, to 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 some point, right? Again, back to not being a priest or an attorney. Um, don't make <laughs> promises you can't keep. That that's 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 a big one. Um, and then let's get to and and I think we I want to conclude with this where you're going mm -hmm. right now is don't take sides. Like this that's, one that's oh. that's big, and that's where trust comes in and skepticism comes in, uh, you know, it, but don't take sides. You, you have to walk that line. And I can say you, um, I know you do that because sometimes you'll tell me, you know, that, that, uh, that the company's wrong, right. Mm -hmm. that, that we need mm -hmm. to make a change we're not doing, we need to be, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, we need to consider, you know, other, other, um, options from what the path we were on, for example, yes. um, so, and I know you do that, but, but, um, that's a big one. It's huge. This is, this is where I, this is the foundation of my philosophy for what I do. This right here, right? Because I hate when people say, oh, HR just takes the, the, the side of management side for the management. Manage. No, we don't. Well, at, at least me, I take the side of fairness and fairness means if you act fair, whether is it the employee messed up or the company messed up, if you hold both of them accountable, at the end of the day, that action on its own is siding with management, is siding with the organization, because maybe we have a leader that's not doing right by the employees. We got to get rid of that leader. Maybe we have an employee that's not doing right by the business. We got to get rid of that business. So that's why I tell all of my students over at Rollins College, listen to both sides of the story, but whatever you decide to do, do not be afraid to let either side know the options they have or how they messed up and help them with it. 
right? Because Pete, I would not be any value to you at all if I always sided with you and say, you know what, Psh, that person's crazy. And then we get sued, right? <laughs> I'm not doing you any favors with that. No, you're not. <laughs> I'm not saying that happened. No, we don't want that. No, absolutely not. That's why, that's why I'm really big on that one because I want to make sure people understand a good HR department always sides with, with, with what's fair and they do what's right. And that entire thing is siding with the best interests of the organization. That's it. I think, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think that's it. So in, in, in concluding, is there any in conclusion? Is there anything else, Ricky? Did we cover it all? Did we, did I know, I, think, I know, uh, despite our, our other podcasts about violent language in the workplace, <laughs> have we beaten the horse enough? There we, <laughs> um, you know what I like, let's do one more real quick, real quick. One more. All right. Can we talk about how to handle complaints, uh, about other employees versus leadership? Sure. <laughs> I love how you did that. Sure. Sure, Rick. No, look, because we it, it's look from from an HR for, from an HR point of view, if you have if somebody come to me, right, and they say, Hey Ricky, your business partner is doing ABC, blah, 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 blah. Here's what's happening, right? What I do, I go to the person above that business, my my business partner, and say, Hey, just wanted to let you know, here's a concern, here's a complaint. How do you want to handle this? I don't automatically insert myself into that situation because now this is my business partner. They're almost my peer, right? And I want this investigation to be as fair as possible because perception is key. If people see that we're boys and I'm investigating you, come on, how's that going to look like, right? But if I, if my business partner is a VP of operations, I'm going to go to the CEO and say, hey, just wanted to let you know this is here. If you want, I can handle this or you can handle this and I guide you with it. But I wanted to let you know this concern came into play. And the best thing to do is for me or your boss to come to let you know there's a complaint that has been filed against you. We're going to do an investigation. And that should not be that should not be received as an ego hit or a stab in the back. That's just the way the business works. Well, it's impossible not to take those things personally, I think. Correct. No, correct. It really is impossible. Because the first few times, I was hurt, Pete. I'm not going to lie. I was hurt. And I'm like, how could they not like me? And then I was like, God, they're being unreasonable. Whatever. I've done anything, everything right. Well, post Whenever on social messes... media a few times, you'll find out how they don't like you. Why yeah. they... <laughs> As we know. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah, but they complain. And I just give them the information. Here you go. I've got so many complaints. It's not even funny, man. So not one uh, of them stuck. <laughs> so leader, same thing. What's different about... Uh... You know, when when the complaint is about the leader. No, no, no. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. That was the one about the leader. But if 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 the employee is, is coming to me, like I said earlier, about their leader, I'll go to their um mm, okay. the, their, their one over and have that conversation. But it's fair to let the leader know what is being said about them. I I never want I never not want to because again, I'm still have that business relationship and I want to make sure you know how I work. Here's how I'm going to investigate. This is not personal. Here's the questions. Give me the information and we'll go from there. And then we'll go have coffee later on. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think, I think, uh, I think that's a perfect way to sum this up. So yeah, I think the, uh, the poor animal is, uh, it's just, yes, yeah, dead. So we love questions. We haven't done a Q and a in a while or uh, yeah. if, if we, we need to um, probably do one soon, hire calling H I R E C A L L I N G at four corner resources.com. So if you've listened this far, you ask us something, I've been rate us in review. We should say that at the beginning, Ricky, we should say rate and review us while we still have you because I know we lose people as, as we go on. Um, no one skips ahead to the end, the, the dramatic <laughs> end. We are at this point. Likely just talking to each other, and that is fine. And that's um, still fun. Yeah. That's still fun, right? We can, right. we can we can keep going off air, and we will probably. But yeah, I are calling at fourquarterresources.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you, and drive safe, Ricky. Thank you as always. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Have an awesome weekend, folks. Good night.